Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Tech Team Trance Channel, where we're going to run Android OS on Proxmox today. Stay tuned. Here we go. First of all, what is Android OS X86? Android is a mobile operating system developed by Google. It is based on a modified version of Linux kernel and other open source software, and is designed primarily for touchscreen mobile devices such as smartphones and tablets. In addition, Google has further developed Android TV for televisions, Android Auto for cars, and Wear OS for wristwatches, each with a specialized user interface. Variants of Android are also used on game consoles, digital cameras, PCs, and other electronics. So, let's see. What is Proxmox? For those that don't know what Proxmox is, it's a powerful open source server virtualization management platform. It provides users with a web interface to easily manage virtualized environments. Proxmox is based on KVM and LXC. And it supports both Linux and Windows operating systems. With Proxmox, you can easily create and manage virtual machines, containers, and storage devices. All right, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to download the Android ISO file from the internet. There's the site, androidx86.org. Okay, so I searched for it, and I went and found the download page. And I just went to the main download site, downloaded from False Hub. And I'm looking for specifically the 64-bit version ISO. So I'll make sure to get that. And as you can see, it is downloading. And we're going to wait the full minute for it to download. It didn't take too long. You have like your fast internet connection. It should be really, really quick. But it is a sizable file. Now you want to upload the Android ISO onto the Proxmox machine. So we'll go ahead and select the file. I went to my downloads and I selected the Android operating system ISO and it's currently being uploaded into my Proxmox environment. Okay, once it's uploaded into the Proxmox environment, we're going to create a new virtual machine for Android OS on Proxmox. We have to tell Proxmox about our new ISO so that we could run it correctly. All right, so it's going to be going to be on my node for 10 118 is the machine id android x86 is going to be the name so i can identify it easily uh there's nothing else that i have to change there isn't a whole lot else that i have to do um now i have to select the proper iso image leave it alone as far as linux 5.x kernel I'm going to not do anything with the graphics card. Pretty much, we're just going to leave that alone. I'm going to double the disk size, make it 64 gigs. Okay, and then I tend to look over the settings just to make sure I'm not missing anything. I'm going to give it two sockets and two cores. You can't have more sockets or cores than your machine has. So it gives a nice base for cores. I'm going to up the memory to 4, four gigs for this particular instance of uh, Android OS. And click OK, Next. I'm going to leave the bridge network for the virtual machine alone. And this is the 
information screen. Make sure that everything's all right. And then we would click OK. And then as you can see, or not see, machine is created and it's ready for us to start. So the next step is to boot the virtual machine and install Android OS on it. We'll follow the prompts and the operating system that lead to an installation. So I'll get my console up and then I'll just go ahead and start the virtual machine that we just created for Android operating system. We're going to install, do the install, the hard disk. Pay close attention because this is where I kept it simple. Now, the first thing you have to do is you have to create or modify partitions. You, if, if you need to detect devices, that's what you would do if you have devices that you plugged in later after the fact. Or, but anyway, we're in CF disk and we're just going to create a simple partition using all of the free space on the disk because that's just really simple and I'm just going to keep it that way. Uh, I don't have anything special that I'm doing with this, so I'm going to make it SDA1 boot. Make sure you make it bootable. And you write it first. Say yes. Writing partition table to disk. Now it'll take a second. And then quit the application. So you have to tab through all that to quit. So I'll quickly tab through and quit. All right. So now it recognizes that we have our device. Now we can format it to ext4. You choose to format SDA1 to SDA4. All data in the partition will be lost. We chose to lose all the data. And we're formatting the partition. All right, so that should be done for us. All right, I'm just going to do a couple of things for us checking inodes, blocks, and sizes. And it's going to do another pass, and it's going to do a couple of passes, and there we have it. We are going to skip installing Grub because I don't have multiple operating systems to install on this device, and I think that will be fine without that. And we'll skip making it as a read write, just for simplicity's sake, for all intents and purposes. And then we'll just go ahead and run Android x86, see what we have. There's a couple of things that we have to do. We have to set the time zones, set the keyboard, and um, and it's pretty much it recognizes for us what information it's getting off of my device. So pretty much the time zone was set to the correct times, and uh, the keyboard was set to English, as you'll see. Uh, so you just patiently wait for the screen to load. Really cool. I'm really excited about this. We get Android running on the uh, device here. So it's ready for us. It's selected English, United States. Now it's going to try to connect to a Wi Fi. But here's the thing I do not have a Wi Fi card in this device that I'm running this on. So I click skip. Then I go continue. Because at the time I didn't think um, I, I could do anything about that. Click next to select your date and time. I'll just accept, but you can, you know, change that if you choose. And then I'll just protect what it thinks is my tablet, which is actually a, a Dell Power Edge 410. 
Oh, yeah. All right, so we're going to set our pen and everything. All right. So we're in. I'm going to use the taskbar feature. There it is. It's, you can barely see it. It's below. And then I'm waiting for this to load up, and then we'll see what we have. Take a look. You have all the different standard items that you would have in an operating system, such as calculator clocks and settings and such, etc. Um, now it wants us to connect to Wi Fi. Now, here's the thing there is no Wi Fi card, so we're going to use virtual Wi Fi, virt Wi Fi. And I think what's happening is it's just going to use you know the line that i have connected or the virtual line that i have connected to it due to the uh proxmox system okay let's prepare for setup copy data long paper and more checking for updates We're not going to do any backups from the cloud or any other device. We're not going to do any copying. We just want a fresh install. All right, now uh, it's time for me to sign in with the, the Google account to get any benefit out of this. You can skip it if you want to, but you won't be able to install any apps or anything on it if you that's what you choose to do without your Google Play account. So we got it all in. I agree. Gonna get some account information. Turn off the backup to Google Drive. I have nothing I wanna back up from here, except that the privacy policy and all that good stuff. You know? All right, so if there's anything else, no thanks. I just want to get to the operating system and get it going. All right. And this is what it looks like, voila. It's, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's more, you know, best for a tablet device. And you know what? We may even want to try installing it on a tablet device. Maybe that's something for another topic for another channel. We'll see. But uh, it keeps giving me that message at the top, and we'll take a look at what it is. I don't like nag messages on my operating systems, and so we're going to clear that up right away. All right, so I'm going to go to the Play Store and see what's there. It says update Google Play services, so we're going to have to try to do that. Uh, I clicked on that, and we're going to click update. It's going to take a little bit. That's a pending. It's going to stay at pending for a minute, and then it's going to be ready to update the Google Play services. Google Play services are a component that's required to get any benefit out of the operating system. So everything, it's best to keep everything up to date anyway. Usually, you know, with a fresh install, that's the best thing to do because that's what we do. Now it takes a minute, so please, please be patient. Of course, this is a recorded video. You can always fast forward and slow down as you need it. But pretty much we have the operating system, Android OS x86 running on a Dell PowerEdge 410 as a virtual machine on Proxmox, which is really cool and really handy. It can be beneficial for educational purposes. All right, so this is taking a little while, so we can, you know, 
you know, patiently waited out, sort of fast forwarded it, but I didn't because I wanted to sit and talk with you guys and get my watch time up. YouTube has become such a technical thing now. Okay, and once this is done, we'll be able to shop around at the Play Store and see what kind of applications and apps we would want to run. Okay, there we go. We finally are getting some progress. And it wasn't that much time to actually get the download process going. All right, so... Now we have to just get it installed and then we are all good to go with our Android operating system. Okay. So we are, we are all done with the install. We have Android x86 operating system platform running on Proxmox. It's a virtual machine on my Dell PowerEdge 410, as stated before. Um, I'm going to go shop at the Play Store, look for different apps. Uh, one of the apps I want to do is I want to be able to remote into it from Windows. I don't know if I'll be able to do that. That's maybe another topic for another video. Um, and really, you know, that's what we have. All right, so pretty much thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel and I'll make more videos, of course. Uh, like the video on your way out, visit all my links, support the channel, and thank you for watching and have a great day.